do your kicks sound like <gasps> and you want them to sound like well then here are three quick tips to make your kicks sound better tip number one this is the most basic tip Make sure you use the right sample. Different genres have different types of kicks, so pay attention and make sure you use good samples. My go-to is Sicky Beats, Pandora Kit. The second tip is make sure you're using a distort. You can go up to the effects tab here in your kick and you can use a boost. Now you only wanna use a little bit or you can use a lot. If you don't wanna use the distort in this tab, feel free to add a fast distort on your mixer channel or any other plugin. And for the last tip, you can go into the piano roll for your kick, select all the notes, and you can change the velocity. This will allow the kick to sound louder and hit a little harder. I hope those tips come in use. If they did, let's hear the beats you made with them. Stay tuned for more shorts. Yo, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a chord progression in under 30 seconds. All right, the clock starts now. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the piano roll, go to helpers, and make sure a scale is highlighted. I'm gonna use F minor. Next, I'm gonna lay some notes down that sound good. Perfect. Now we're going to make a chord by skipping a white note, adding a note, skipping a white note, adding a note. Perfect. We have a simple chord progression. Now let's spice it up. Let's copy these root notes, put them down an octave. Okay, perfect. Now we want to select these upper notes and click Alt S to strum the notes and Alt R to randomize the velocities. Perfect. Under 30 seconds and this is what we made. Hope you guys like this video. Make sure you hit that like. Let me know in the comments below if you wanted to see anything else. Now we know how to make a simple chord progression in under 30 seconds. Today I will show you a hidden FL Studio stock plugin that no one wants you to know about. Have you ever wanted to make your own plugin? Have you ever wanted to combine multiple plugins into one? Ah, it's just a little plugin called Patcher. Now it may not look like anything to begin with, but Patcher is very powerful. Patcher allows you to combine multiple plugins into one. So you just have a simple interface that you can use up here at Surface. And you can even tweak surfaces by adding your own buttons, bevels, whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. You can tweak whatever you want in the background. You can add whatever you want, but if you're not feeling very savvy, they do have a ton of presets. If you go up here and you just click, you can see all the preloaded presets. For example, a simple preset called, let's say, gross beat high pass, just two knobs. I mean, it may not sound great, but at least you have the opportunity to go in and change whatever you want, right? There are tons of resources and guides out there, especially on Reddit, where you can download other people's patcher patches i guess are there any other hidden plugins or underrated plugins that you know about let me know does your productivity in fl studio suck well here are five productivity hacks in the fl studio piano roll okay let's get the piano roll open number one let's enable the notes on the side of the piano this will help to quickly identify keys to do that let's click triangle view key labels and all notes or root notes i prefer just root notes it makes it a little cleaner number two let's enable scales so to see which keys are in which scale let's go up to this little triangle let's click helpers and note grid highlights and we can go back to helpers scale highlighting and we can change which scale we're in. Now we know which keys are in which scale. Tip number three, let's enable ghost channels. So again, we go to helpers and this time we enable ghost channels. Now we can see what notes are in the other channels in the background. Number four, down here at the bottom, we can actually change different things about each note. So we can change the velocity, pan, release, filter, cutoff frequency, and fine pitch. So if you want to change the pan, we can just go to note pan and we can choose which note we want to push to one side or the other side. And for the final tip, here's a little cheat sheet that you can screenshot. This shows you all the shortcuts in the piano roll and these come in clutch. I hope these tips help. Now we don't have to ask. You wanna make easy melodies with no hassle? Well, here are five quick easy steps on how to make catchy melodies. For step number one, we're gonna go ahead and open the piano roll and go ahead and enable helpers, scale highlighting, and we can enable our scale. I'm gonna choose G minor natural. Different genres of music use different scales. Now step number two is we wanna start making chords. Once you have your general chord progression, feel free to spice it up. Take your root notes and copy them down a scale or take these mid notes and push them up a scale. Step number three is add a top melody. Go ahead and experiment with what sounds good to your ear. You can even repeat the same four things over and over. So something quick and easy like this where it's repeating four times. So step number four is we want to take all of our scale, copy it over and shift it down five notes. Some of the notes might not fit in the scale so we want to go ahead and fix those by shifting them down or up. Now the last step is to find a good plugin that this will sound better in. I hope you found those steps super easy and helpful. Now we don't have to ask the question. Yo, what is up everybody? I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Here's my quick tip of the day for your DAW. Organize your folders. The three areas you wanna focus on are your plugins, drum kits, and your beats. You wanna make sure you're backing these up weekly at least so that you do have copies somewhere else in case something goes wrong. And for your plugins, make sure you have two different folders, one for your 64-bit and one for your 32-bit. It just makes your life easier further down the road. And for your drum kits, put an exclamation mark in front of your most used packs so that they 
show up at the top. And for your beats, use a consistent file name structure to help you organize and find your beats. By being organized, you will stay on top of things and it will help you develop better beats. Make sure you like this video and I will provide you with more quick tips. Hey you, are you making it rain from all those beats you're selling? <coughs> here are five of my favorite plugins that you should go out and buy. Hey you, what are you doing? Get out of here. At number five on the list, we have Miroslav Philharmonic 2. Philharmonic 2 has a lot of orchestral sound. Philharmonic has you covered. It has flutes, it has violas, violins. This is great for making drill beats. At number four on the list, we have RC20. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen your favorite YouTuber use it before. It gives you that vinyl sound that you really like to distort, crackle the noise. I love this plugin. It is an absolute game changer. At number three, such a simple plugin that you can use gross beat for, but halftime is amazing. For $12, this is a no brainer. At number two, Contact. Contact has so many libraries you can download bell sounds vocal sounds piano sounds any plugin you can dream of contact already has a library for it and at number one omnisphere and the amount of things you can do within omnisphere yeah maybe a couple hundred gigs but i can see why so many people recommend omnisphere and that's why it's number one in my list let me know did i make a mistake in my top five is there a plugin that i'm missing let me know in the comments below and i'll take a look Yo, here's a quick fl studio tip if you have a complicated automation clip and you want to copy it to another state this is how you do it so let's say i want to copy this mix level to this mix level all i have to do is double Double click on the first one, click this wrench tool, copy state, double click on the other one, wrench tool, and paste state. So now you don't have to waste time trying to copy that exact automation. Hey, what's up? Here's a real quick FL Studio tip. In your mixer channel, if you have a channel with a ton of effects that you want another channel to have, you can do that one of two ways. The first way is if you go to the channel that you want to have the effects, you side chain it to that channel, or you can just directly route it to this track. Now anything in channel four will be routed to channel two, so it'll have those effects. And the other way, which is my personal favorite, is if you right click, you go to file, and you click on save mixer track state as, but you hold it, you can drag it onto any of the channels that you want. So now channel two and channel three have the exact same effects and everything should match up. This should save you a decent amount of time. Now you don't have to redo all those effects in a separate channel. Now here's a quick FL Studio tip. When you start a new project and you're not using a template, what happens is all your effects and sounds aren't chained to any channels. So let's say I had these four in there. The quickest way to do this is to highlight all the channels by clicking so that all of them are highlighted green and clicking Control and L. This will send those sounds to the first available spot in the mixer channel. You can accomplish the same thing by right clicking on your mixer track, click channel routing and route selected channels to this track. Alternatively, you can start from a different number if you want to by clicking shift control L. This shortcut saved me so much time when I first started making beats. I hope it saves you guys time too. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I am giving away my default template when I reach a thousand subscribers. This is how you set your MIDI controller dials in FL Studio. So to set your dials, we go to the top here. We click this once and then adjust any dial that we want. Now on our MIDI controller, we turn the dial that we want tied to that slider. Like that. Okay, so if we wanted to do multiple dials at once, this is how we can do it. We click the dial at the top, and then we go ahead and adjust any sliders that we want. Like so. Now on our MIDI controller, we do the same process. One, two, three, four. That pop-up goes away once you've turned all the MIDI controller dials. So now we can control channel one, we can control the volume on our mixer, and we can control the other channels. Easy. Now look at that, everything matches. So here's a quick tip for FL Studio to make sure you're always in key when playing a melody. Trust me, you don't need to know music theory for this, and this is something you have not seen before. Okay, here we go. So I have my basic chord progression here. It's in a D minor natural Aeolian scale. Now I wanna make a melody using my MIDI, but I have no music theory knowledge. I know my scales in D minor, so here's what we can do. Let's open the settings from a melody instrument, click settings, click the wrench tool, then this piano here. Let's change a reference note to whatever my scale is. In my case, it's D minor. I do that by right clicking on the note. Now if I play any of the white notes on my MIDI controller, it will be in scale. I hope this tip helped. Stay tuned because today I'll be showing you how to use the Fruity Parametric EQ plugin in FL Studio. When you open up Fruity Parametric EQ 2, this is what it looks like. You can boost frequencies and even cut frequencies. There's also a bunch of presets that you can go in and quickly change stuff. So if you wanted to cut low end and high end, you can click on one of these and it simplifies it so you can select a certain range. Now these stock settings usually need tweaking for certain sounds. Tweak them to your preference. Now to help find frequency ranges that are annoying to the ear, this is what I like to do. I select on one of these numbers. Now I'll boost this frequency and you can see how it kind of creates this ramp. Now the setting down here lets you tweak how tight this ramp is. So you can turn this bottom knob all the way down and crank this up. This helps you find certain frequencies that are annoying to the ear. Once you find the frequency that you don't like, you can go ahead and turn it down by sliding this slider on the side. I hope these tips helped. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hey guys, real quick video today, I'm gonna show you a tip for the browser in FL Studio. But let's say you're like me and you don't like having multiple folders open at once. There's an option up at the top. If you click this little triangle, you can select show only 
one folder content. Now what this does is if I have something open and I try open another folder, it automatically closes the other one. I also like changing the size to compact because I have a bigger screen, it's easier to read for me. Another quick tip, let's say I like my folders open like this constantly. I can go up at the top here and click frozen. Now when I'm on snap six, frozen means that it represents this layout. So if I go back to all, you can see it says default layout. And then if I click on snap six, it opens that same layout that we just saved. Super quick and easy, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Then today I will be showing you the absolute basics of what an EQ does. I've had a lot of people ask me how to start making beats. So I wanna start breaking down the simple things. If you're an experienced producer, stay till the end and let me know if I missed anything. So an EQ is an equalizer. It lets you cut and boost certain frequencies of a sound. Fruity Parametric EQ is the stock FL Studio equalizer. At the top here, they show what sounds usually sit in which frequency ranges. So the frequency ranges from zero to 20,000 hertz. It is critical in beats that your instruments and drums aren't clashing for the same frequency ranges. For example, a piano in 808. Now this sounds bad because the piano is playing in a lower range and so is the 808. So if I cut out the low end for the piano and give the 808 its own frequency range, this is what it'll sound like. Now this already sounds a lot better. The 808 and the piano aren't clashing for the same frequency ranges and the 808 has its own room to breathe. If you have any specific mixing questions, let me know in the comments below. If not, hey, another quick tip for you guys. Are you tired of not being able to open multiple plugins at once? I mean, look at this. This is annoying. I can't open both plugins at once. Well, this is how you can fix that. First, you can go ahead and open your first plugin. And before opening your second plugin, make sure this little gray box is highlighted green, and then you can click on the plugin. Now look at that. Both plugins are open at once. Stay tuned for more quick tips. Here's a quick tip for you guys today. In your piano roll, you can only drag out notes by the right side. And when you go to the left side, you're only allowed to move it. Now, if you want to change it, you can go up here to the little triangle, click on edit, and click allow resizing from left. Now on the left side, you can drag it out. And on the right side, you can drag it out. And you can also move it around from the middle. I hope this quick tip helped. If not, what would be the first thing you bought for your dream studio setup? Would it be a laptop? Would it be a new MIDI keyboard? Would it be a set of studio monitors? Let me know in the comments below. If you don't know, then today I'm gonna show you how to change your default layout template in FL Studio. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's say I make this layout and everything's laid out perfectly the way I want it to. So this will be how my project opens every single time. The first thing I need to do is I need to save this file in a specific location. So if I go to file, save as, and I'm gonna to go to this location right here. Wherever my FL Studio is installed, I wanna to go to data, templates, and then save it in this folder. Now, after we save it there, we wanna to go to options and general settings. In general settings, we change this default template to the one we just saved. If it doesn't appear here, close FL Studio and reopen it. Now, every time you open FL Studio, you'll have the sickest template that you just saved. Stay tuned for more tips. Here's a quick FL Studio shortcut for you guys. Let's say you're working on a melody and you wanna hear the individual chords, but you're tired of clicking and hitting spacebar. What you can do is you can hold Alt on your keyboard and right click your mouse. And that'll bring up this little speaker icon. What you can do is you can individually play chords. You can also slide your mouse to hear everything at once. I hope this tip helped. If not, yo, what up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you a tip that speeds up your workflow specifically for your hi-hats. Let's say you've already filled each two steps for your hi-hats and you wanna to start to add your hi-hat rolls. What you can do is you can open your piano roll and you can pencil in where you want your hi-hat rolls. Now normally you would pencil out each step, but instead of what you can do is you can select your note using control and drag, and you can use Alt U. Now by changing this time multiplier, you choose how many hi-hats you actually play within that note. So once you find the amount of hi-hat rolls that you want, you just click accept. And now this other trick is where you select your hi-hat rolls, right click, and drag these notes at the bottom up. Now this will increase the velocity for the hi-hat. Another way to do this, which is not used a lot, is if you select your hi-hat rolls and click Alt and the letter O. Now this piano roll LFO pops up and these are the settings that you generally want to use. You can change the range, you can change the value of the roll, and you can actually make them dip a little bit. But I like keeping my hi-hat rolls like this. Do you have more tips for your hi-hats? Let me know in the comments below. If you wanted to record your own rap vocals to a beat that you like, but you can't seem to get the auto-tune to sound perfect on the beat, well this is how you check to see if you're on the right scale. Let's say I have my instrumental or my beat right here. What I want to do is I want to go to tunebat.com forward slash analyzer and I want to take my beat and drag it right into this box. What this should tell me is the key that I should be in and the BPM of the song. So what I can do in FL Studio is I can change the BPM and I can also change the pitch that I want my vocals in. So because it's B flat it would be A sharp. Make sure you're in the right scale here whether it's minor or major. Now what I can do is I can drag my beat in make sure it lines up with the grid and once it's lined up with the grid I can start rapping. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Here's a quick trick that I like to use. This is a shortcut that you can do in under 5 seconds. So let's say I have a really complicated 808 pattern. 
and I don't want to draw my kicks in individually. What I can do is I can go to my channel rack right here, click on this little green thing, make sure that only the 808 is highlighted, click Control C, now click on the kick so that this is highlighted, and click Control V. Now you can open your piano roll for your kick, hit Control A, and now hit Alt K. Now these are the settings up here that you want to copy, and down here you want to make sure that only C5 is selected, and you do that by right clicking on the note. So once you have that selected, click Accept. Now as you can see, all the kicks line up with the 808s and they're all playing on the same note. This is the trick I use every time and it saves me so much time. Let me know if you guys have any tricks to use in the comments below. But before you go, has this shit happened to you multiple times where your FL Studio just doesn't respond? Well, I'm going to show you some steps to help you recover your corrupted FL Studio files. First, I got to wait for this to actually load up. All right, if you go to your options and you go to your file settings, here you can check how often you're actually backing up your files. So my autosave is set to regularly every five minutes. Now, if you go to this folder location right here where your user data fo folder is and you follow this address. So if you go to this folder here, it leads you to this. Now in this folder, you wanna click on FL Studio, you wanna click on projects and you wanna click on backup. Here's where all your auto saves are saved to. So if one of your files are corrupted, you can check this folder and open one of these up and make sure you copy it to another location so this doesn't get overwritten or anything. And this should hopefully have your backup and I may be just save the day if i did save the day for you make sure you subscribe and follow and let me know in the comments below if this helped here's a real quick music theory tip for you guys let's say a dragon this fire melody but look how organized this is the scale is listed and the bpm is listed let's say i'm not a fan of the scale and i want to change it down how do i do that all right so it's listed as f minor here so if i double click on this this should pop up now here where the pitch is what you want to do is you can go ahead and change the pitch so if I want to change the pitch down, I'll bring this down. If I want to change it up, I'll drag it up. But then how will I know what scale I'm in? Okay, so if I look at the top left here and hover over the pitch, it'll tell me how many cents have changed. So every hundred cents is one note. So let's say I moved it down a hundred cents. From F minor, I'd now be at E minor. Let's say I shifted it down another hundred cents. Now that's D sharp minor, then D minor and so on. What you can do then is you can go into your piano roll and make sure the correct scale is highlighted. I hope this tip helped. If not, hey you, stop. Can you tell the difference between these two mixes that I'm about to play? And this one. If you couldn't tell the difference, then do better. Basically what I wanted to demonstrate is that the order of your effects in your mixer track makes a difference. The way FL Studio processes the effects is from top to bottom. So imagine your sound is traveling down this chain. So for example, for vocals, you usually want to have your autotune as the very top and then you want to have your EQ. Some people prefer flipping it because then the sound processes a little bit differently, but it's entirely up to you. But the main thing I wanted to get across was pay attention to the order that your effects are in. Here's a quick tip for you today. I'm going to show you how to reverse your melodies within seconds. So let's say I have my piano melody right here. And I want to reverse this. I can do this one of two ways. The first is on my effect track, I can add a plugin. So an example of a plugin would be Effectrix and it has this feature called reverse. I usually don't like to use a reverse feature in plugins just because of the way it processes the sound. On your pattern, if you right click, click quick render as audio clip, it'll render out that sound. So now this is a piano melody. Double click this, click on reverse, and as simple as that. I hope this quick tip helped. If not, hey, what's up guys? I'm posting a video to follow up with another video that I posted earlier this week. So one of my previous videos I showed you how to reverse a melody. Now I'm gonna show you one more trick to do on top of that. So let's say I like the chord progression that I have. If I were to reverse this, then the chord progression would be flipped. One way to fix this is by recording this, reversing it, slicing it, and then moving those chunks around. I'm going to show you one simple step. This is your melody. Hit Alt and Y on your keyboard, and make sure you click Flip horizontally and accept. Now your chord progression has been flipped. Now you can do what I did in my last video. Right click on your pattern, render as audio clip. Make sure you select Wrap Remainder, start, drag it in, double click, and reverse. Just like that, easy chord progressions that are now reversed. If you guys thought this tip was useful, then make sure you hit that follow button and make sure you subscribe. Please stop making your 808 sound like garbage. Here are two quick tips on how to fix your 808s that sound like all right, tip number one, as soon as you drag your 808 sample in, I want you to go ahead and right click on it and click cut itself. Now what this does is it basically cuts the 808 so it doesn't overlap when you're playing them. So if you didn't have your 808 cut itself, this is what it would look like and this is what it would sound like. So cutting itself basically makes the 808s play like this and sounds a lot better. 
Now let's say you want to play the 808, but only play it for the length of your note. So for example, I only want the 808 to play for this one bar but it continues to trail off. Now what I do is I click on the 808, go to the top on this envelope automation setting, change everything to low except for hold. So your settings basically look like this. Now the 808 will only play for the duration of the key press. Simple as that, two quick tricks to make your 808 sound better. If you don't want to take my advice, I'm going to show you a tip that's great for beginners. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to find the scale for autotune. Today I'm going to show you how to actually set your mic for FL Studio. Now I'm going to assume you already have a microphone. Now the first thing you want to do is check your audio settings by going up to here to options and then audio settings and check what device you're using. You'll most likely be using FL Studio ASIO. So if that's the case, what you want to do is you want to go to your mixer track, find which channel you want your microphone to be in, select this little drop down at the top and your microphone should appear here. Now because I'm using an audio interface, I should have two options for both inputs. So I know my microphone's on input one. So as you can see, it's actually monitoring my vocals as I speak. Now I can go ahead and enable whatever effects I want on this channel and my microphone should play with those effects. I hope this tip was helpful. If not, you better stop wasting time in a full studio. Here's one quick tip to speed up your workflow. Let's say you have a bunch of effects in your mixer channel and you want to rearrange them. Now normally you'd have to hover on top and go to move up. Or you can hover and click U or D to move it up or down. Instead what you can do is hover your mouse over it, click shift on your keyboard and use your scroll wheel to move that effect up or down. Now this trick also works in your channel rack. So look at this melody one. Oh, let's just shift that down. Look at that. It even works on your mixer channel. So if I hover over one of these channels, hold shift and scroll, you can see it move. You can even see it move in your channel rack above. You guys better take this advice. If you don't take this advice, uh oh, did you make a mistake in FL Studio and don't know how to fix it? Well, not to worry, right? Control Z works. Well, not necessarily. Let's say I have this melody in FL Studio and I accidentally delete some notes. So I go ahead and delete some of these notes. I go ahead and delete some of these notes and I go ahead and delete some of these notes. And now I realize I shouldn't have deleted all those notes. I actually want all these notes back. Not a big deal, right? Control Z should work. Control Z, Control Z. Nope, doesn't seem to work. It seems to redo that undo, if that makes sense. Well, this is how you undo more than once in FL Studio. Instead of using Control Z, you use Control Alt Z. So for example, Control Alt Z, Control Alt Z. And look at that, my melody's back in place. I'm not sure why it's like this. If someone knows, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, then at least like the video. Yo, what's up? Today I'm gonna show you a new trick to tune your 808 super easily. This will make sure that your 808s are pitch perfect. All right, step one, send your 808 to a mixer channel. Step two is add tuner onto your mixer channel. Step three is click this bass button. Step four is to play the C note on your 808. Step five is open your 808. Step six is to change your reference note from C to whatever this value says here. And the last step is to change this pitch value to the opposite of what this says. So instead of positive 35 cent, we'll change it to negative 35 cents. All right, now let's test this out. Perfect. Perfect. That's how you tune your 808 in less than a minute. Are you tired of your channel browser constantly looking like a mess? I mean, I realistically only need one folder open. Well, this is how you can clean it up. You go to this little triangle at the top left, click on it and select show only one folder content. If you go ahead and collapse everything, now what'll happen is every time you open a folder, it'll only open one folder. So as you saw, it minimizes the other. This way you can constantly keep this browser nice and clean. I hope this tip helped. Make sure you hit that like button. Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you a really useful panel that you probably overlooked. Okay, before you start going in the comments saying, oh, I already knew that, relax a little bit. This is a very basic tip. This panel at the top tells you a lot about what you're hovering over. That's why it's called the hint panel. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to change the pitch, but you probably didn't know how to check how many cents are changing the pitch. Well, if you look up to the top left, you can see as I slowly turn it, it'll actually tell you the exact amount that you're changing it by. Or if you don't know what like this knob does, you can look at the top left and it'll tell you what it does. So this is a channel volume, this is a channel panning, and if you change it, it'll tell you by how much you're changing it by. So use this panel at the top to know exactly what you're changing and by how much you're changing it. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be showing you my free VST recommendation for the month. This comes from Spitfire Audios and it's called BBC Orchestra. Let me just find it up here. 
BBC Symphony Orchestra. Now, normally for orchestra sounds, you usually have to download a contact library, but this is completely free. You have to go on the website and just enter your email and they send you the file and you can download it pretty much instantly. To use this plugin, you do need to have their Spitfire Audio Lab though, which is amazing anyways, because you get a ton of free sounds. But in this orchestra plugin, you do have different sections and it's laid out the same way an orchestra would be laid out. So you have your violins, your violas, your flutes, bassoons, clarinets, you have everything in here. Now this plugin is amazing for getting those realistic orchestra sounds like your violas. I use this preset a lot. Yeah, so I highly recommend you guys check out this plugin if you're looking for any orchestra sounds. Spitfire is probably one of my favorite companies to download from because a lot of their stuff is free and a lot of their sounds are really high quality sounding. If you guys like this recommendation, make sure you go download it and let me know in the comments if you already have it. Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you a super simple trick to add more bounce to your chord progression. So let's say I have this basic drill chord progression right here. Now to add instant bounce to this, all I have to do is add gross beat to my mixer and click on one beat gate. Now I can turn this volume down and what this will basically do is it'll make the volume go loud to quiet, loud to quiet, but it'll smooth this transition out. This is what it sounds like. Look at that, I'm already finding myself bobbing my head. I hope this tip helped, make sure you hit the like button. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you a tip that's really gonna help your organization with FL Studio. So specifically, I'm gonna be focusing on when you export your files. Now, a lot of you probably didn't know this, but if you go to your options up here and go to project info, you can actually name your file here. So if I wanted to call this whatever, and I filled out my name, I just put whatever comment I wanted, and I just go ahead and deselect the show info on opening. And now if I save my project, What'll happen is when I export my file, those details will be saved in the exported audio file. If I go ahead and save this file as a .wav, it'll actually save that information to the title and contributing artist. So imagine if you did this for every single project you worked on, all your files would be super organized. I hope this tip helped. Make sure you hit that like button. I bet you get annoyed when this happens to you. When you try to change the scale in FL Studio, you normally have to go to scale highlighting and then click on something and then it'll close that window. And then if you want to change the letter, you have to go back, click scale highlighting and then change it again. And you have to keep doing this until you find the right one. Well, here's a shortcut. If you open your scale highlighter, instead of left clicking, right click. If I right click, I can change the scale and I can change the root note. So instead of having to open it every single time, I can just open it once and change it to whatever I want to. I hope this tip helped because, yo, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you one quick trick to make your melody mixes sound less boring. All right, let's say I have a simple piano melody playing. Now normally what you would do is you'd go into this channel rack and add all your effects and then use these dry and wet knobs to change the ratio. But instead of doing that, try routing it to different channels like this and adding the effects on each individual channel. Doing this will allow you to control your effects a lot more precisely. So if I wanted to, I could add portal on one, reverb on another, halftime on another. And by doing this, I can actually control how much of my portal's playing, how much of my reverb is there and how much halftime is playing. I hope this tip helped. Let me know if you use it in your beats. Yo, what's up guys? Today so I'm gonna show you a feature in FL21 that I'm super excited for. This will change your workflow setup in FL Studio. So let's say I paste my beat in and I add some vocals. Now usually in FL Studio, when you save your vocals, they're saved in a different folder, not the same as your project folder. And in order to save them all together, you usually have to zip them or consolidate all the files into one folder. Now in FL21, when you go to File, Save As, it comes up with this new save menu. Now you can name this project whatever you want and you can change the folder location. If I create a new project folder, it'll basically create a project folder and import all of my recordings. And if I click Import Use Samples into Project, folder it'll import the kicks claps snares whatever i had in my channel rack into the project folder as well now if i save it this is what it'll look like so it'll have an audio folder with my recordings and i'll have a sample folder full of the samples that i use it also creates a backup folder so all your backups will save in the same location instead of saving to a different folder i can't wait till this feature rolls out officially let me know if you guys like this feature or not yo what's up guys super quick tip for you today let's say you're working on a project and you have tons of sounds loaded into your channel rack let's say you have a particular sound that you like but you're not sure where you dragged it in from if you wanted to find what folder this sound is from all you have to do is open that sound so this pops up and then you take your waveform file here and just drag it into the side and what it'll do is it'll highlight that sound for you and it'll show you the exact folder that it's in so now you can go in to that perfect pack that you have and you can replace it with whatever sound you want i hope this tip helped make sure you hit that like button don't you guys hate when this happens when you open a plugin and it just takes forever to load or it even just freezes let's say you found a perfect sound in that plugin though that you really like but it's just killing your computer 
What you can do to save memory and to save your computer is you can right click on the plugin once you find that specific sound you like and click on this create direct wave instrument. It'll ask you where you want to save this file. Just select anywhere in your computer that you want to save these to. So once you saved it to that folder, this will pop up and just click start. Okay, awesome. Now this bell DW or whatever you called it will pop up down here. Now this plugin right here will replicate that exact sound that you had in your previous plugin. Also note, you may have an issue where it cuts out. So you might have to extend the notes like I did here, but this is what it'll sound like. This is the original. And this was that direct wave instrument that we just created. Crazy, right? And now you don't have to load up 30 different Omni spheres. You can save your presets like this. I hope this tip helped. Make sure you hit that like button. Hey guys, super quick tip for you today. If you're like me and go through tons of sounds in your mixer channel and end up going past the sound you like, here's a quick way to refine it. If you right click on the sound up here, it'll actually show you the history of what sound was in that channel position. So whatever sounds I load up into here, they actually get saved into the sample history folder. So you can go back and quickly find whatever sound you like. All right, I hope this tip helped. If you have any interesting tips, let me know in the comment section below. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you a really quick tip. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. But in your channel browser here, this is how you add extra folders. If you go to your options, general settings, and you click on this file tab right here, this browser extra search folders pops up. And what you can do is you can click on this and add an extra folder, point it to whatever folder you want, click select folder, and you can rename it on the side here. So I went ahead and called this tutorial. Now if I close this, this and I click this little reread structure button I'll see that that folder popped up right there I hope this tip helped make sure you hit that like button yo what's up guys here are my favorite features in FL Studio 21 number one the new save feature you can save every single recording that you have in your project to the same folder and it'll also save all your backups to the exact same folder this will be super convenient for file organization number two the new channel browser in here it'll show you all your project files all your plugins that you're using everything in your library and any plugins that you start number three the new crossfade feature so if you wanted to fade two different sounds together you can easily do that with this new built-in tool to make it super easier for transitions and for recording vocals number four if you're a very paranoid person about your project files they have a brand new save function if you go to options file settings they actually have a new backup timer there's a new option for every minute and before risky operations so now your project can save every single minute that you're working on it number five last but not least this is probably the most requested feature from every single FL studio that's been released and that's the new themes I'm actually a huge fan of this feature and actually have my own preset saved but the templates they provide you with are actually amazing let me know which feature you guys are really excited for and make sure you hit that like button